EFT Prenotes. This presentation is primarily for government entities that are just getting started with EFT payroll. It can also be helpful to watch as a refresher for fiscal officers that currently process EFT wages, but perhaps you have had no need to send a prenote in a long time. A prenote is a test file that you can send to your entity's bank. Then your entity's bank will send it through to the banking system's automated clearinghouse network to make sure that each employee's bank account information corresponds to the records of each employee's bank. That can give you some assurance ahead of time that your employees will actually receive their money on payday. Oh, but not yet. That's not the purpose of a prenote. Prenotes are safe to send because they are zero dollar transactions. That just means they only test accounts. No one will actually get paid money when you send a prenote. Sending a prenote is optional, but UN Support recommends it so you can catch errors in advance of payday. Typically, it takes about seven calendar days for the bank to validate the bank accounts with the prenote. I'll explain the reasons for this verification period later in the video. But don't worry, the prenote is not something you send every payroll. After you get confirmation, you do not need to send another prenote except when an employee changes their bank account or when you add a new employee. Or in the event that your government entity changes banks, which probably doesn't happen too often. Besides testing employee accounts, there's one other reason for sending a prenote. That is to test the overall file settings. Remember, from the previous video, the EFT setup form is one of the things the specialist takes care of in the initial setup phase. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes we discover via the prenote that these settings need a few adjustments. If you will be using the data entry method, then you will not use UEN to create a prenote. Your bank probably has some other means of testing accounts. Check with your bank representative about their options and complete any steps they might recommend. Concerning this training, if you use the data entry method, you can skip to the marked sent portion of the video. The rest of it does not apply to your situation. For those of you using the file upload method, you should continue watching all sections of this video. In the previous video, we were waiting for our employees to provide us with bank account numbers. Well, the deadline has passed and our fiscal officer has updated the EFT settings. Let's take a look at what Brutus has completed so far. Go under Payroll, Maintenance, Employees to look at the employees list. At a glance, we can see which employees we have authorized to receive EFT wages by looking at the EFT column where it has a yes or no. Yes being they are authorized for EFT. Notice that only one employee is marked no. Mr. Smith chose not to participate in EFT, and that's okay because our township policies do not require it. But the column does not tell us everything that we need to know. To dig deeper, I'll edit one of our employees just as an example. I'll pick Steve Friendly. Notice that our employee is in the test state that we talked about earlier. And that's true for all the employees that are participating. They are all marked EFT authorized, but do not have a check mark filled in for prenote was sent. All of them should stay in a test state until we validate their bank accounts. You should really read this description as prenote was sent and confirmed by the bank rather than just sent. For now, I'll close this form without saving any changes. Creating a prenote. To create a prenote, go to Payroll, Maintenance, EFT Prenotes. You'll get this message every time. It's just a reminder that most banks require you to transmit the file at least two days prior to the effective date. I'll explain that more after I create the file. Notice a few things about this list. First, all the employees are automatically checkmarked. Second, the only employees that will appear on this list are those that are still in the test state. 
Since today is Thursday, June 28th in our fake training world, I need to put in an effective date of Monday, July 2nd, because as we saw in the message, it needs to be two days in advance and Saturday and Sunday are not considered bank business days. One last thing about the effective date. It doesn't have anything to do with pay the payroll schedule. At our fake township, our hourly employees are paid on Fridays. And it doesn't matter. This has nothing to do with the actual wages or the payroll schedule. It's a test file. Notice the display button below the list. This allows you to display and print an EFT batch report. Look above the list grid. A checkbox is available if you would like to include employees' bank account information on that report. UN defaults to this setting to unchecked. Checkmark it if you want to include the bank account numbers, but if you do, make sure you store this report in a secure location. For our demonstration, I'll leave it unchecked. To create a pre-note file, simply click the File button and UN creates the file right away. Unless the bank specifically requests a customized file name, the file name will always be in this format. The first two characters are PN for prenote, followed by the effective date, but listed backwards by year, month, and day, then followed by a letter. It will always save to the file location C underscore UN eFiles. After this pre-note file is verified by your bank, return to this area and use the Mark Sent button to activate EFTs for the verified employees. This is a good reminder, but we won't be able to verify the data for several days as I mentioned. At this point in the process, it would not be right to click Mark Sent. For now, we'll just click OK to continue. And we get another report or message that says Display Report of the saved EFT file. This is the same report you would generate if you click the display button, so we'll click yes. As you can see, it's a simple report. It lists all the employees that are in the prenote file. Not much to it. The blank space on the right is where their account information would list if I had selected that option. You can print the report from here if you want, like this. But for our demonstration, I'm just going to close. That brings us back to our prenote form. Notice everyone is still on the list. We shouldn't do anything here until we get confirmation from the bank. Now we're ready to upload the prenote file. You'll need to get your bank's instructions for this part. Usually it's pretty easy. Normally it involves clicking a button on your bank's website to browse the computer and pick the file to upload. Remember, UN always places the file in the C underscore UN underscore eFiles folder. Once you've finished, the bank will usually send some type of confirmation that it uploaded successfully. Your bank may have additional instructions. This can vary from bank to bank, so be sure to discuss this topic with your representative. You should always delete the file immediately after a successful upload. If someone were to steal your computer, the thief could potentially get access to your employee's bank account numbers because the prenote file is not password protected like your UN application. Don't worry, if for any reason you need to recreate the file, you can easily do that with UN. Be sure to watch the video on how to set UN to delete files automatically after a set number of days as a second level of protection. As stated previously, after you transmit the prenote to the bank, you should expect at least seven calendar days before the accounts are verified. You may be wondering, why does it take so long? Here's the breakdown. Start with two days. Most banks require that you upload the file two banking days prior to the effective date. The effective date is the date it will process on your bank servers and then be sent to the ACH network. Then add three days. The ACH network currently takes three banking days to process the request. This is where they check to confirm that each employee's bank account 
corresponds to the records at each employee's bank. Now add at least two more days. Banking days do not include weekends or bank holidays, which will add at least two more days to the wait time. Total that up, and the resulting wait time is typically seven calendar days or even longer. As you can see in our example, we will have to wait one extra day to July 6th because July 4th is a bank holiday. The odd thing about the ACH network is that it only sends a status report back to your bank when the system detects an error. The ACH does not send a positive status report saying everything's okay. If you don't hear back from the bank after the wait period, I recommend contacting your bank representative just to confirm that there are no error reports. If none are reported, you are ready to move on with the next step. So what should you do if an account fails the test? Aw, oh, no reason to feel bad. Everyone makes mistakes. The first step is to make sure you didn't key it in wrong. Double check the employee under Payroll, Maintenance, Employees. Compare what you entered in against the information the employee provided. If the same information is in UAN, then there probably is something wrong with the data from the employee, and you'll need to follow up with them. A common mistake is that they will pull the numbers off a deposit ticket that was from an old bank account. Once you are able to make corrections, simply repeat the steps to recreate and resend a prenote for only the employees that originally had errors. In our fake Buckeye Township, the bank reported there was only one failed account for our employee, Carl Crank. Since we found there were no key in errors on our part, Carl must have given us the wrong account numbers, so we will follow up with him. In the meantime, we are ready to start EFT for everyone else, so Carl will have to continue getting warrants for now. There is no need for us to delay direct deposit for the other employees. You may recall at the beginning of the session, I mentioned that there is a second purpose for sending a prenote file. That is, to test the overall file settings in the EFT setup area. The good news is that if you receive an error of this type, you will usually get it from the bank within a day or two. So be sure to write down the exact error message so that UEN can investigate and we can get it resolved quickly. When you are ready to pay your employees by EFT, then you should mark prenote was sent in their employee maintenance form. These steps are the same whether you use the file upload or a data entry method. The only difference is the way you verified the bank account information. To make the switch, I'll go to Payroll, Maintenance, EFT Prenotes. Click OK on the effective date reminder. In this step, the effective date is not relevant, so we can leave it blank. We need to uncheck Carl's ID so that he will remain in the test state for now. And then click Mark Sent. Mark Prenote was sent for these employees to begin posting EFT wages? Yes, we are ready to do that for the next payroll, so I'll click OK. Carl's the only one left. This Mark Sent button is really a shortcut and a very convenient one for those of you with long lists of employees on payroll. Just so you understand, we'll go back to payroll, payroll maintenance employees, and I'll pick just Carl and another employee as examples rather than all of them. And we'll click on Edit, Advanced. And let's look at our other employee, Steve Friendly, first. As you can see, Steve is now marked prenote was sent as well as all the other employees that disappeared from our prenote list when I clicked Mark Sent on the other screen. So using this Mark Sent button on the prenote screen can save time, especially if you have, say, 50 or more employees. It's much faster. Now, when we look at Carl, he is still in the test state we want to keep it that way until we verify his corrected account information by sending another prenote. I hope this was helpful. If you need assistance with the steps shown in this video, please contact UN Support using the information provided on the screen. 
All the videos in the EFT series qualify for House Build 10 training. If you have any questions about self-reporting, please call or email your question using the contact information on the screen. By itself, this video is not long enough to self-report. If you have only watched this video, you cannot self-report the time. However, if you watch more videos in the EFT series and their combined time is at least 30 minutes, you can self-report the combined time.